guys, um, I am going to do my September wrap up now. Um, yes, so this is heavy on the haul and light on the books. Although I don't think I've talked about these books, so this might actually end up taking longer than I thought. Um, so I'm going to go in order of least favorite to most favorite with the books that I read in the month of September. Most of the books that I read in September were for the um, book two prize. I was in the I was judging for the fiction for the finals. Uh, so the first book that I have, I don't have a physical copy of it. It is uh, A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier. I think that's the name of the author. And oh boy, did not like this at all. I don't understand how books like this made it into the final, to be 100% honest with you. There's another book that like made it into the top three that I'm going to talk about next. I just like, I just don't understand. Uh, this is a historical novel set I forget during when exactly. Maybe it's World War One or World War Two. I don't think it's World War Two. Either way, it's set during a war-torn time. Um, I think in the UK, and we're following a woman whose uh, brother was killed in the war. Her fiance was killed in the war. She's basically like considered a surplus woman. I think that's what they're called. Like these women that have been left alone because of the death and tragedy of war. And so it's just her kind of trying to find out like what to do. So she's got a mom that she was living with and caring for, I think, but then she wanted to move to become her own independent woman working as a typist or something. It's just uh, so boring and so not exciting and just like not well written. And there's a lot of things that make it feel like uh, kind of like she's the author is patting her back too much, patting herself on the back too much. So, you know, one of the characters, one of the characters that um, our main character, whose name I don't remember at all, who she comes into contact with or who becomes her friend, ends up being a lesbian. And so there's a lot of like, you know, talk around that. And then she's, and then she like has this like thing with like this guy who's married. And I just, I don't know. All of it just felt like she was trying too hard to touch on too many subjects. And she was trying to, I think I'm like having an allergy to my tree or something. I don't know. It just was, it was too much. It was too, it was too much for me. I, I just did not appreciate any of it. I ranted a lot while I was reading it and I'm disappointed that I didn't like document that while it was happening because I was feeling a lot of rage when I was reading this book, especially like the lesbian bits. I just like, they filled me with so much rage because she's, you know, like this woman is her friend and it's it's kind of like the classic conflict in any kind of story where, you know, things are happening and things are like things are going okay and things are like things are starting to look up even though you start down here and then all of a sudden there's this like conflict and then now everything's in a tailspin and then everything gets resolved and is nice and beautiful at the end. And it's just like that I don't know, that wasn't necessary. It's like again, her patting herself on the back for being okay with a woman being a lesbian like congratulations, you're a, a human. Like, that that's not, like, anything special about you to be kind to people because they're not, you know, heterosexual or whatever. I think the word heterosexual the way, that way was kind of weird, but it just felt, like, gross to me. And I don't know. I just, again, I, I, I don't really want to spoil, like, too much plot, so I can't tell you all the reasons that I got really, really pissed while reading this book, but... It just wasn't for me. I'm sure people who like a nice historical fiction where everything works out in the end will enjoy the book. But there was a lot of like, are you kidding me's that came out of my mouth while I was reading it. And I'm a little disappointed that I didn't have a physical copy to write in it, but I knew I wasn't going to like it and I was not about to shell out cash. So I just rented it for free on audio from Libby. So anyways, <laughs> the next book that I have uh, that I in retrospect, don't like either is 10 minutes, 38 seconds in the strange world by Elif um, Shafak. I, I think I rated this a single thread. Obviously I rated sixth in case you were wondering. I think I rated this fourth. I wish I would have bumped it down to fifth and made um, the beekeeper of Aleppo fourth. But for me, this book and the beekeeper of Aleppo were like pretty much the same kind of book. And again, it's just like boring just surprisingly boring for this topic I did not think that the writing was special at all um, I saw someone when I was getting kind of like Ugh, do I even really like this book someone posted some kind of comment about like how the second half of the book is like so great because the first half of the book is the first it's the 10 minutes and 38 seconds after like right after she's murdered 
And then um, she's kind of, you know, like looking back at different bits of her life. And then the second half is like her, her best friends kind of like figuring out what to do with her body. And um, so I was like holding out hope that that second half would be funnier. I don't really think it's funny at all. I guess it's like kind of interesting because they get like caught with a dead body and so like da 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 whatever. I just, again, I, 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 I think I might have cried while reading this book at some point. I'm sure something touched me emotionally, but I don't. I don't know. I think I might have rated this two and a half or three stars. I almost want to reduce it to two. Just nothing about this I found, I don't know, I just didn't like it. And again, I wish that I had filmed this video like right when I finished it so I could give you better information as to why. Because a lot of people love this book. Surprise, surprise. It got third place. And I just don't understand. It is not very good. It put me in a reading slump. This book put me in a slump because I knew I had to finish it for the booktube prize and I was just struggling through it. It took me, I don't know, it, I like didn't want to read basically anything and I just, I hate, I just, I don't like it. That's all I have to say about that, I guess. <laughs> um, the next one I kind of vaguely liked a little bit and that was a Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Bruni. I read this, um, for my book club, my in real life on Zoom book club. Um, this was the book for the month before that I didn't finish and I finished it in the month of September. And I thought this was fine. Also, I need to stop letting other people tell me what to read because I'm, I feel like that's when I'm disappointed the most, not when I'm just like picking randomly just based on instinct, you know. Uh, this We're following Lillian Boxfish. She's some old ass woman and she's taking a walk on New Year's Eve. It's set in the 80s and she as she's walking, she is, um, like remembering different parts of her life. And so she kind of, it kind of, it goes back and forth each, I think it's each chapter or like each chapter is set into, is broken into two sections of the present day, her taking the walk and then something gets triggered in her memory. And so then it goes back in time. And these parts that go back in time are not linear. They like do jump around. Um, so whatever. I don't care about that either. Um, I feel like most of the people that were in my book club really liked this book. I do like this more than I like um, Olive Kitteridge. I, I enjoyed Lillian as a character much more than I enjoyed Olive. Um, but again, I just like don't, don't care for some reason about about her life. The, the writing wasn't bad though. The writing was just fine. I would read something else that she wrote, but I don't know. I'm just sick of these people trying to be like cutesy. I don't I don't know. I think there's something wrong with me. So anyways, the next book that I read, I did really like, and that was Lanny by Max Porter. Um, I have his other book, uh, Grief is a Thing with Feathers, I think that I purchased a long time ago because Jen Campbell like, loved it and I haven't read it yet. Um, I don't remember a ton of this other than we're following a young boy named Lanny and then he's got his parents. I think that he, there's something... Um, about him that's not uh, quite right like he, he he doesn't like understand things as much and he has a lot of like fantastical kind of ideas about life um, and so things do not uh, go super super great I think he goes missing at some point I wish that I could remember more about this book I'm gonna be better next year guys I promise but I did really really like this this um, I'm trying to find it goes oh that's right the first the first half of the book um is it goes back and forth between different like characters and one of them is this person um dead papa toothwort and uh yeah so it just kind of goes back and forth between uh the mom the dad this dead papa toothwort and then like a a, a neighbor friend that kind of like helps doesn't help watch him but that he he's kind of developed a, a little bit of a relationship with this this man in in the in the neighborhood and yeah this i like really, really liked this. I wish I could remember more to tell you about it, but it's good, I promise. And then my favorite book of the month, Women Talking by Miriam Taves. Um, oh boy, I didn't read her other book that everyone like really, really loved. What was it called? Almond Puny Sorrows. Did I not read that? No, no, no. I have it, but I haven't read it yet. Um, so this is following I think it's basically, it goes over two nights, but it's, if you haven't heard of this book, then I don't know what you're doing here in the world. Oh no, that was rude. We all miss things. I take that back. I'm so sorry. This is why we need to think before we speak. Um, we're following a group of women that are part of this Mennonite community that have been systematically like raped um, by the men in their community by, not by every single one of them, but you know, 
there's like eight of them or something, but all the other men 100% knew about it. So these women are deciding, oh, what are we going to do? Are we going to stay and fight? Are we going to run away? Like, what are we going to do? What are our options? And so it mostly has two families and they're like each, each family has kind of like more of one position than the other. And so they're trying to kind of argue it out and decide, um, what they are going to do. And there's, um, one guy that is recording everything because he left the Mennonite, he, he left this community a while ago. Um, and, uh, cause his parents were like excommunicated or something and he's come back. And so he is able to like, you know, translate into English what they're saying because it's not, they, they don't speak English. So this was absolutely incredible. It just like really highlights and shows like all the problems with like the patriarchal society and like the decisions that women have to take in order to like protect themselves and their children. Um, this was absolutely amazing. I really, really liked this. I don't remember how many stars, probably four and a half. I really liked this. Um, so those are the, the books that I read in the month of September. Uh, you know, whatever. Uh, not, I'm not the best bunch. I liked two of the five, so it's a little disappointing, but I think whatever, it's fine. So, um, I am giving away a new copy of this. So if you um, would like to enter to win my giveaway for a copy of Women Talking by Miriam Taves, um, it will be a new copy. Please let me know. And then surprise, surprise, I'm going to be getting rid of these two stinkers. So if you want, and you will be getting my physical copies that I'm holding in my hands right now in this video, um, if you want this 10 minutes, 38 seconds in the strange world or Lillian Boxfish, Boxfish takes a walk, please also let me know in the comments below. I think once I've posted all of these videos, um, I am going to just like do one like quick video saying which books I'm giving away because I, I don't know, I doubt that that many people are watching this video, but when you put the word giveaway in a title, I think that people click on it and watch it. And so I just want people to be able to enter if they want it. And I know that people really, really like this. So I assume people will want, I mean, it's a hardcover that looks like I barely even touched it. So even that promise I did read it. So those are the books. Um, I will show you now all the books that I bought. I was, well, I wasn't that bad in the month of uh, September. Is that what month we're talking about? But I bought a lot of books at the end of August for Indie Bookstore Day. So almost every single one of these books is from Indie Bookstore Day. So I'll start with the ones that are not first. So again, I am part of a couple, a few subscription services. Um, and this one is from Literati. Let me double check. Yes, uh, so this is a literati book, um, and they just pick, I think there are new releases, I'm not sure, but um, they sent The Runaways by Fatima Buto, and I don't know if this is translated or not. I'll find out. No, I don't think so, but it is, oh, it's a Verso book. I didn't even realize that. I love that they're picking small presses. I'm very, very pleased. I think that a lot of the books that literati picks are small presses um, and their bookstore is amazing if you live in Michigan near Ann Arbor or if you just want to purchase online ah, they're a lovely lovely bookstore so yeah I have a literally a new idea about that and then the book from the Finney Finney books uh, that I got is uh, Childhood by Tove Dilt Dits no Ditlifson mm, burp, burp, burp. This is the Copenhagen Trilogy Part 1, so this is part of a three-part series, I believe, and it's a memoir, um, and it's translated by Tina Nunnally. And I'm kind of irritated because I feel like on the internet, like when you um, look it up, it shows that this is not a memoir, but it is a memoir, but maybe I'm getting my wires crossed with something else. Um, so yeah, I just love this. This is a penguin, uh, but it is beautiful. And it's a UK edition too. I feel like there's a lot of UK books that Finney puts in their boxes, so that's always very exciting. Then I'll just do the two other books that I don't think were part of this um, uh, indie day haul. And they're just, <laughs> I was, <laughs> I shop at New Seasons and I'm Lately, I don't know about you guys, but I just like am stress buying a lot of things. Unfortunately, I think next year is going to be the great year of the declutter because I just keep bringing things into my house just like on a whim. I like don't even think about things. I just buy them. So, you know, but I was like, I want these books, whatever. So they had these at the checkout because, you know, how everyone's been. I need to read about anti-racism, etc. Um, so I purchased How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kennedy. And so you want to talk about race by Ijeoma um, Olu Oluo? Oluo. I should have looked up how to pronounce her name. Um, and yeah, so they were just at the end of the checkout counter. And so I was just like, you know what? Let's just get them. Let's swoop them up and bring them into my house. Okay. So the rest of these books are for, are from Indie 
bookstore day. Um, so I'm going to show you first, I don't even know actually this one, how this one came into my house. I don't remember buying this one. You know what? I think I bought this one because of, of a podcast actually, now that I'm thinking of it, um, how fascism works, the politics of us and them by Jason Stanley. Um, I think that maybe he was on democracy now, or he was on some kind of podcast. And then I was like, Oh, that sounds really, really great. So I think that's why I purchased this one. Now I'm remembering um and this next one I'm really sad so I have um one of my friends his family um his mom's side of the family is originally Italian and I hello welcome to my channel my cousin is Italian my aunt married Italian so I've been going to Italy very like I used to go to Italy a lot so my Italian used to be good it's not so much anymore and so he had this book but in Italian and I couldn't get it in Italian but they did have a French version and I theoretically took French in high school and kind of know some French so it's basically really exciting it's a short story collection that's in the language and um but it is you know pretty basic so that you can kind of figure it out and then they um do bolded words that are like new words um for you to learn and so they have like the definitions in the back and then they do a little quiz at the end to see like what your comprehension was of um of the chapter and they um have like a little you know like revision of like the new words and stuff so i'm really excited i'm disappointed because i couldn't get the italian version i want i think it's out of print or something um but this this series is it was in a bunch of different languages um but i don't know if they still exist that much um and then from i wish i could remember all the names of the bookstores i bought most of these books from the bookstores that i would have gone to if i went to seattle because that's where i always go for any bookstore day and so i definitely got this from the um the poetry store whose name oh open books perfect it's on the back <laughs> great um but that is homie by Denez smith i've read all of their other collection or actually i don't know if that's true i've read insert boy and um the one that everyone was reading like a year ago. They don't call us dead or they call us dead or some something like that, you know, with the two people on the cover with the, in, yeah. So anyways, um, I wanted to get this one because I think that Tanez Smith is a magnificent poet. Um, and yes, I would like to read that. Um, then I got Lovecraft Country by Matt Ruff. And this might not have been part of Indie Book Short Day now that I'm thinking about it. Basically, everyone started watching the TV show and I was really jealous because I want to read the book before I watch the show, which is idiotic and stupid. So maybe I'll read this in January if I'm feeling really feisty and then I can finally start watching the show. <sighs> I've heard so many good things though, so I need to make that happen. Um, then I got this book. Oh my gosh, sorry, I got that. I feel almost guilty that I bought this because this is a chunker. Um, I got this from Queen Anne Book Company. It's kind of, it's harder to buy books online, like from so I just you know, I just picked stuff. Um, but yeah, so this is just a list of books and I think they're alphabetical, which is a little disappointing. I would love it if they were either chronological or by region or something like that. But there are lists at the back of this book too. Um, oh, that's the index. Let me see if I can find the lists. Um, no, that's still the index. Oh, a, miscella a miscellany of specialists. So a garden of verse, listen up, 12 terrific audiobooks, family read alouds, offbeat escapes. So there's um, a bunch of lists in the back and then it sh tells you the page number that the book is discussed on. So yeah, I'm really excited. This is not counting towards my TBR because this is going in my, my, my stack of books that are lists of books. Because that, that doesn't count. I mean, eventually I will read it, obviously, but I don't think that it should count for my TBR personally. Um, and then the rest of these books are from the 1001 books to read before you die list because my original plan for next week, year was to only read books from that book, from the 1001 books to read before you die. But now I'm doing this other project, so maybe there will be some overlap, but I was trying really hard to buy books that were translated um, from that list specifically one of these is not translated but the rest of them i believe are um so the first one that i have is platform by michelle Hulebeck. i've heard his name pronounced so many times and yet here i go not doing it well i know this author is like super controversial or whatever but you know I believe in uh, judging things by their actual work and not by what other people say about them. Um, and this is translated by Frank Wynn. I have literally no idea. Uh, then I have The Blindness of the Heart by Julia Frank. This looks like um, a war type book. Look at that. Look at that hairdo. Um, yeah, she leaves her seven-year-old son, a provincial German railway section in 19... 
45, never returns, blah, blah. Okay, First World War. So anyways, <laughs> I'm sorry. So this is translated by Anthea Bell. I'm just, I. this is one of the ones that I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to, oh my gosh, I keep forgetting that my computer falls asleep at 20 minutes, uh, which means I've been recording for 20 minutes. So let's, we're almost done, I promise. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, then I have Celestial Bod or no, Celestial Bodies. That's another book, I think. Celestial Harmonies by Peter Esterhazy. And this is translated by Judith Solo Sol Solozy. And I have actually heard really good things of this. I'm very upset with how big it is, but it's actually not that many pages. The paper is just really thick. I think it's less than 900, which you would not like, no way. Yeah, it's less than 900. That to me looks like a 1600 page book whatever. Uh, then I have Snow by Orhan Pamuk and this one is translated by Maureen Freely. And I don't know anything about any of these books, just FYI. Then I have The Swarm by Frank Schatzing and this is translated by... Sally Ann Spencer. Oh, and I got this book from Island Books. See, I love it when you buy indie guys because like, look at, look, do you think that Amazon will do this for you? No, this is so cute. I love it so much. Ugh, buying from small businesses makes me so happy. Um, then I have uh, uh, Soldiers of Sal Salamis, <laughs> Salamis by Javier um, Circus. And I think this might be an Argentinian author, but I'm not sure. No, Spanish. Well, he lives in Barcelona, so I assume he's from Spain. Um, and this is translated by Anne McLean, and I got this one at Edmund's Bookshop. Then I have the one that's not translated, and that is The Color Purple by Alice Walker. Can we talk about this cover, people? How beautiful. <gasps> so much. I'm so pleased. I finally have that book. I think I've been putting it off because I haven't really liked the cover that much, and I know that I'm going to read it eventually, so, and it's definitely not going to go out of print, um, but that cover is beautiful. Sorry, I just jiggled this so much. Uh, then I have the Museum of Unconditional Surrender by um, Dubravka or Udrezik, translated by Celia Hawken, Hawkesworth, Hawksworth? What is this about? Whatever. <laughs> I just wanted to support people at Indie Bookstore Day, people, and I want to read a list. Okay, so get off my back. Um, then I have Dirty Havana, Dirty Havana Trilogy by um, Pedro Juan Gutierrez, and this is translated by Natasha Wimmer, and I assume this has something to do with Cuba. That's as far as I can tell you. So those are it. I was very Okay, so, um, oh, I think I got a fuzz on the tip of my tongue. So with regards to my, my, well, you know, book balancing, it's not looking good. I purchased 17 and only read four, so that's 13 books onto my shelves. But I don't know if you noticed, those books were super fat, so I added over 5,000 pages to my TBR. Um, I am not counting the, the audiobook that I read because this is like, I'm keeping track of my TBR specifically, so the books that are on my shelves, and it's also not counting the 1,000 books to read before you die book, because that also, I don't think, counts for my TBR, because it's not really a TBR book. It's uh, how to get more books onto my TBR book. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so this is my September. I don't really like it very much. I just... I think I was being lazy. The whole month was, the whole year. It's all bad. Um, but look how much fun I had over here with all this washi tape, and look how, how little I read... It's just like no reading. So sad. Oh well. You know, like, oh, I read all at the beginning of the month and then just bloop. Nothing. I tried this new, like, way of doing things, of putting, um, like these boxes to kind of put my schedule in. And I, I did, I did like that, but I got kind of over it. Um, and then, you know, there's just some more stickers. Nothing, nothing particularly exciting. My, it's, the rest of it's not that exciting um so anyways yeah that is my wrap up I also watched some movies I'll go kind of quick though because uh well this video is already 24 minutes long I was gonna start doing separate separate um videos I am gonna start doing that for next month for October but in September I didn't watch that many things 
Jake and I did a rewatch of Hocus Pocus at the beginning of September because you got to do that. I, I think I should rewatch it now too. Um, and then we watched The Wiz, which I had never seen and is so lovely. Um, <laughs> the music is so good. It's so fun. Um, the only thing that bothered me a little bit was um, Michael Jackson. He plays the scarecrow. His makeup bothered me for some reason like the way especially because the tin man i don't remember who who the actor is that plays the tin man um but he his his makeup and everything is so so well done but michael jackson's like his the chin line area you can just like i don't know it just but that's like such a small nitpicky thing to be annoyed with i you know we all have our things that we like notice the most but it was so good the music was so much fun um i really really liked that uh, then we watched Toy Story, which I only gave two and a half stars to. I don't think I'm a Toy Story person. I put down that this was a rewatch for me. Um, I must have seen it when I was a kid because I know the story. It's just not that interesting to me. Uh, then we watched Spider-Man 3, gave one and a half stars to that thing. Uh, yeah, that was a really sad movie. The only part that like compelled me at all was the part where Spider-Man is being a total jerk to MJ. I did think it was really, really funny. Oh gosh, what was the, there's the part where he's like turned into, this is like, you know, the Spider-Man that has Tobey Maguire and um, James Franco and uh, Kirsten Dunst and who plays Venom? What's his name? What's his name? The guy that is in that 70s show. I get him confused with Tobey Maguire. Topher Grace. Topher Grace plays Venom. And there's this whole scene where when Tobey Maguire is like turning into like the, the dark Spider-Man the evil guy or whatever, um, where he is just like doing these like really awkward dance moves. I would watch that movie forever just to see that scene again. I thought that scene was so funny. Um, there's a couple of really, really funny things, but categorically it is a terrible movie. It is not good at all. Too much stuff is happening and it's just, it's not good, but I really enjoyed some, like I, I laughed out loud for quite a few things. Um, then Jake made me watch Mean Streets, which um, I gave two and a half stars to. Uh, I don't remember what my problem with this movie was specifically, other than I think that I was really irritated. I was definitely really irritated with Robert De Niro's character because he just like was a slacker. So I don't know if I had a problem with the movie per se. It's kind of like when you're rating something based on the content or like how well it's done. So like there's my enjoyment of the thing and then how well the thing is actually made. So I think it was well made and well done, but it just wasn't for me. I think there was a lot of like misogynistic crap that really, really grated on me. Um, there's like the one woman that he's dating, but no one can find out because she has like epilepsy. And so it's embarrassing. Huh? Is that a joke? So Anyways, I did not really like that very much, and I will probably never rewatch it. Uh, then we come to the movies that we watched for our little like film group, and all our theme for this month was silent films, which was really really hard to do because you have to like be staring at the screen the whole time. So it was very difficult. Uh, the first movie that we watched was The Gold Rush, which is a Charlie Chaplin film that I did not vote for and I did not like. I gave it one and a half stars. I just don't think that Charlie Chaplin is my kind of humor. Uh, then we watched Fantasia, which was... Uh, I kind of want to rewatch that right now, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. It's just so lovely, the music. It wasn't technically a silent film, I guess. Um, it was more just a concert with animation but I think it's really it's very very comforting uh, then we watched Nosferatu um, which I you know can't really complain about it is a classic then we watched the cabinet of Dr. Caligari that I had never seen before or known anything really about and that one was super super good I gave that four stars I think that might have been I guess I technically rated Metropolis and Fantasia higher, but I think that The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari was my like actual favorite that I enjoyed the most. Um, so maybe I need to re re reassess those stars. Um, but yeah, I don't know. If, if you haven't seen it, I would highly suggest. It's basically this, this guy has this show that he takes on the road and there's this guy that's been asleep for, I forget how long he says that he's been asleep for, but he comes into town and then suddenly people start kind of like being murdered or something. So it's a little bit of a mystery. It's spooky. The, the lighting is incredible. The, um, the like style of the set is just like bonkers. It's so beautiful. It is, it is lovely. Uh, then we watched Playtime, which I also absolutely loved. This is a movie, um, 
who's the director? Um, it's a Jacques Tati movie, and it's just so beautiful. I'm going to link trailers below. Please watch the trailer for Playtime if you do anything else after watching this video. It is so lovely, and just, again, it, it just gives you, like, good feelings, and I, I really want to watch all of um, his movies. I think that there is a Criterion, like, box set of them, so maybe I'll treat myself eventually. Obviously not anytime soon based on the purchases that I've been making. Um, and then we watched The Lodger, um, a story of the London fog, which I don't even remember because it was towards the end. And yeah, I think it was, um, is it a, what's his face name? Yeah, it's a Hitchcock movie. Um, I didn't dislike it now that I'm looking at the like shot of the people. I, I'm, I'm remembering more. Um, I didn't dislike it. It's just like a, a, classic mystery type thing. Um, and then the last movie that we watched was Metropolis, which was a rewatch for me. And I love Metropolis. I think it's such a good movie. It is amazing. Um, I would not suggest watching this many silent movies in a row though, because it is extremely taxing. You have to like with other movies, you can look down, you can do something, you can go to the bathroom, whatever, whatever. Cause you can hear the audio, even if it's something not in English, I feel like you can kind of like, you don't have to be literally staring at the screen the whole time, but with silent movies you have to either text pops up or like just in general everything is very you know you know like with their faces because there's no words coming out of their mouth um, I'm sure there was when they were filming but nothing that we can hear so anyways that was my wrap-up for the month of September thanks for watching <laughs> Next month, I will break this up into two separate videos, I promise, because I watched so many movies, it would be obscene, although I did only read one book in October, so. Uh, anyways, um, all right, great. Uh, thanks for watching. If you've read any of these books, especially the ones that I've hauled and would like to talk to me about it, let me know. Again, if you want to enter to win um, uh, Women Talking, Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk, and 10 minutes, 83. 30, 38 seconds in this strange world. Uh, please comment below letting me know and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.